-hmm. and you can just go for it. This oh, is going to be a nice go. ground cracker crust. Talking. There we go. <laughs> Each evening in just two hours, three million bats. Most of these credit card commercials ask, what's in your wallet? They want to know if you have the newest flavor of the month credit card that they're selling. But we want to know, how do you manage what's in your wallet? Are you just surviving? Do you spend without thinking? Or do you count every dime that leaves your wallet? Either you control what's inside that wallet or what's inside that wallet controls you. So to the savers, the spenders, and everyone in between, let me ask you again, what's in your wallet? All right, so we're going to spend some time talking about what's in your wallet, and um, I'm just going to ask you not to get up and leave because I know you want to. <laughs> right? I mean, this is, this is that whole thing in the church where, okay, the pastor's going to spend a couple of weeks talking about my money. So let's just establish this right off the bat. We're going to talk about money and all kinds of other things because here's what I want us to understand when... When we talk about what's in your wallet, the wallet represents everything you have, everything that you've been given. So I think it's important for us to establish some theological ground, ground, uh, whatever, some baseline, right, that we all agree with. So I want to, I want to. Take us down a theological path for a minute. Theo meaning God, logic meaning a way to think about God. Because I want to make sure that we're all on the same page as we introduce this conversation and we talk for the next couple of weeks. Because I think we need to make sure that we're all on the same page. Because I, while a lot of us think the same way, I want to make sure we're there. And I, I just believe it's important for us to make sure that we're there on the same page. And the same page is this, theologically. That, that, and, and most of us believe this but we don't live this out. And here's what most of us believe. Most of us believe that everything we have comes from God. Most of us believe that. Most of us believe in some way that everything we have has somehow passed through God's hand and come into us. But here's how we live. We live like I worked hard for this. This is mine. I own this. I bought it. It's my signature on the contract. It's, it's this, I own this, right? But so that's how we live. We live one way, but we believe something different. We, we're not sure. Well, you know, okay, yeah, ultimately we can trace everything we have back to God in some way, but we don't necessarily live in such a way that we live out the belief that everything we have belongs to God and has been given to us as a gift that we're all just temporarily in charge of what we have. But we don't really live that way. We live like it depends on us, right? We live as though what we do matters to our future versus what God does matters to our future in such a way that that it's out of balance, that we believe that what we're doing is more important some days. And we just completely forget that what God is doing and what God is giving and, and that God is ultimately in charge of everything and that, whatever, that everything we have, that everything that's in my wallet, meaning all of my possessions, my physical health, my, my car, my house, my, everything I have is God's. And that I'm just a temporary steward that we're all just passing through. Right? I mean, well, I'm not sure that we, believe that, that we believe that in such a way that it actually affects what we do and how we live our lives. And so Jesus calls his disciples, each one of us, to something different. He calls us to manage what we have. That everything belongs to the Lord and we have been called to manage it and to manage it well. To manage it in such, such a way that good things are happening. And the struggle that all of us have is that we're not constantly thinking that everything I've got belongs to God. Everything I've got belongs to God. Everything I've got belongs to God. We don't think that way well enough that we're making the difference God wants us to make. And so Jesus, as he's on his way to Jerusalem, sits down with his disciples and he's teaching them something profound, right? Now he's, at this point in this particular 
passage, Jesus has been with his disciples for a while, and when he started with them, they were pretty infant in their thought process, and he's taking them further and further along in the journey of what it looks like to be a disciple and what it looks like to understand that everything you have belongs to God first, and God gives you what you have so that you can be a good manager over the things that you've been given. That's what he's asking us to do, to to be a good manager, to be a good steward of the things that we've been given. And he's talking to his disciples, and he says, look, here's what a steward looks like. Here's what a good steward could look like. And he ultimately says in this passage that there are people who are not disciples of Jesus who do a better job at being good stewards than Christ followers are being. What a conviction that should be for all of us, that there are people who are doing a better job at managing their resources, managing the funds that they have, because ultimately in the eyes of God, what we're supposed to be doing is advancing the kingdom and making a difference in somebody else's life. Now, that's not one of your teaching notes this morning, but that's pretty serious, right? Our job as stewards and managers of everything that we've been given is that we should be taking what we're giving and advancing the kingdom of God in such a way that somebody else is benefiting, somebody else is getting blessed, somebody else is on the receiving end of what we've been given because we're managing it in such a way that somebody else is getting something from what we're giving. But instead, what we do, here's what we do. Mine. Mine. It's all mine. Right? It's all mine. This is mine. What am I going to do if I retire? What am I going to do if I I lose my job? What am I going to do if I I lose my relationships? What am I going to do? This is all mine. I've got to protect it. I've got to safeguard it. I've got to... And Jesus says, look, give it away. And watch what I do. Watch what happens if you make a decision to say that what I have been given is mine only as a good steward, only as a good manager, and therefore my job is to just manage what I have. Now that doesn't mean you can be willy-nilly. It means you have to be purposeful about this, right? Jesus is calling all of us to do something purposeful. He's calling, the, he's calling out this manager and saying, look, this guy did something on purpose in order to make sure that there were friendships and relationships. And I wonder sometimes if we're not focusing everything on stuff instead of on the kingdom. I wonder if there isn't something we need to do in taking a look at our lives and our wallets. Because we have been called to be in charge of everything we have. We have been called to be stewards of all of God's possessions. Here, here, you see that on the screen? Everything you have belongs to God, right? I mean, we theologically believe that. We're establishing that as a theological groundwork for the rest of our conversation. So I know it's tough to say this, but would you be willing to say this morning that everything you have belongs to God? Would you be willing to say that? If so, just say amen. Everything you own belongs to God. Amen? So if that's the case, we need to start living in such a way that the world could see that in your life and in mine. Because I think what the world does is they look at us and they just see all the rest. They just see us acting like everybody else. Do you know that Christians have just as much credit card debt as everybody else does? No surprise, right? Right? No surprise that we're not managing what we've been given any better. And Jesus calls out his disciples and says, look, we need to be doing this. We need to be managing things better as believers because everything you own comes from God. Therefore, I expect. There is an expectation, right? This manager has a boss and the boss has expectations and he's not meeting the expectation. We all know managers who are are not doing their jobs, right? Anybody know a manager is not doing her job? Don't call it out by name. We don't want to know. That's your workplace stuff, right? 
We all know managers who don't. don't. And here's what's kind of crazy about this. I mean, Jesus is a little crazy. Okay, get it. I mean, born in a manger, dies on a cross, a little revolutionary. So he's taking this revolutionary thought process and he's saying, look, this guy's a little bit crazy. He's going to get fired. And the boss leaves him in charge of the cash box and for the rest of the day. You know what happens in most of industry today, right? If you get fired, they walk you out the door. Right? They call security, they walk you out the door, and then somebody goes to your desk and packs everything up in a box and meets you at the door with your box, and you're not allowed back in your computer. They, as a matter of fact, they've already changed the password. You're not allowed back in the business, back in the building. You're not allowed to touch anything else, and this guy is being told at the beginning of the day, by the way, you're getting fired today? Well, how, would you, how would you like that job? Where, how would you like to be in that situation where the boss walks in in the morning and says, hey, I've kind of been watching you over the last couple of weeks. You're not doing your job, and so today's your last day. And so it's 8 o'clock in the morning. Actually, it's 8.05 because you've already had your cup of coffee. Thank God. And the boss walks in and says, this is your last day, I've noticed. And, and so you're, you've been given the rest of the day to figure out what to do. Now, here's what some of us do. Oh, no, oh, no, what am I going to do, Right? And what Jesus is pointing out is that with this guy, he decides to make some clear decisions about his future. And Jesus is saying, that's a pretty good deal. It's the way to do it, to supervise what I've given you, to take what I've given you, what I've put you in charge of, and start using it to make a difference in the world around you, in your future, in your life, in your relationships. Because you've been placed into a position of stewardship. Stewardship of everything you have. And as stewards, we are called to supervise what God has given to us. And the problem that I believe we have is that we're not doing a good job of that. Everything we have, think about that for just a moment. Your physical body is part of your stewardship. You've been given a physical body. You're supposed to be taking pretty good care of it. God gave it to you to use to, to last your lifetime. And thank God one day you will have a perfect body. Until then, you are supposed to be taking care of the one you've got. You're supposed to be a good steward over the physical body you have. And thank God one day we will get a new one. Because I don't know about you, I don't like the one I've got some days. Anybody with me? How many pills did you take this morning, right? You know, blood pressure and, you know, heart pill and all, you know, water pill, which hopefully you don't need to. Anyway, um, all the stuff, right? I mean, we're called to be good stewards over this physical body, but it doesn't end there. You're called to be a good steward over everything you have in your possession, everything that has your name attached to it, your car, your house, your family, everything. You see how big the wallet gets all of a sudden, right? This wallet is massive. When it talks about what's in your wallet, we're talking about everything you've been given belongs to God. And how are you managing the things in your life? Your relationships? Your finances? Are you taking things in such a way that the kingdom is being advanced? That somebody else is benefiting from what God has done in your life? But somebody else is seeing Jesus coming through in your life because of the way you share what he has given to you. And I don't think that we're doing a great job. Did you know that the average American has $9,000 worth of credit card debt? Now, for some of you in the room, you're like, well, that's not me. And there are other people in the room who are like, oh, I've got that beat. <laughs> which is not a good thing, right? You're like, oh man, 9,000, that's, that's nothing. You should see mine, right? The average is just a little over $9,000 worth of credit card debt. Did you know that most people have at least three credit cards in their pocket right now? Most people in this room. Some of you are like, yeah, I got that beat too, right? I mean, we kind of pride ourselves in how many people will give us credit cards. Let alone, I mean, we're not even on to the Kohl's and Home Depot and Sears, which may not be around much longer. 
which is evidence of not taking care of things properly, right, by the way? Remember media play and blockbuster? <laughs> yeah. We are called to be good stewards over what we have. And I don't know if you know this or not, but you're wealthy. 80%, get that number? 80% of the world lives on $10 or less a day. Some of you are like, I just want to make $10 an hour. And some people are living off of $10 or less a day. Not just some people, 80% of the world. Now, that's, we're not, let's, you know, we can drop down to 2 or $3 a day. We could drop down to $1 a day and start getting some really amazing statistics because those statistics are pretty high. Those percentage numbers are pretty high. And here's what I can tell you. I know some of those people who live on a dollar or two a day. And what I've discovered is that the more you have, the more you worry. The more you have, the more you're concerned. The more you have, the busier you feel. The more you have, the more you feel like you have to protect it. You have to take care of it. You have to look after it. I know people who live in a house made of mud because the mud is free. And the roof is made out of thatch that they got from the bush because they didn't have to pay for it. And the street they live on is made of dirt and there's no electricity in their town, in their village, and there's no running water. And I have been amazed at how happy some of those people are. I wonder if we don't have it backwards. I wonder if there are days when our wallet doesn't have us. It's not the question of what's in your wallet. It's the question of does your wallet have you? Are you with me? And I think it's time for some of us to just wake up and realize how far we have gotten away from what God has asked us to do, to be good stewards, to live on what he has given us instead of living beyond. Because that's what we end up doing, right? That's your next teaching note, that we are called to live on what God has given us instead of living beyond trying to keep up with the Joneses. Because here's the thing, I know the Joneses, they're trying to keep up with somebody else too. I've met the Joneses. <laughs> so how are we going to do this? I mean, we, we can do better at this, right? I mean, just do, do me a favor, just turn to somebody and say, we could do better. We can do better. We could do better. Isn't it true I mean, you, you may have come to church to see God this morning, to meet God in such a way that, that your life could be a little bit better this morning. And so here's some things I think we could do together. We're, these are not your teaching notes. These are just some things. If you got a pen out, maybe you could want to just write one of these down because it really does apply to you. But here's something you can do. The first thing, and we discover this in dealing especially with premarital couples and, and dealing with families who are finding struggle in their lives, that one of the things that they don't do that we just completely recommend everybody in this room needs to do this. You need to go home this afternoon and figure this out. Everybody needs to have a budget. We just expect that, right? We expect government to have a budget. Gosh, doesn't that suck? I mean, the, the, I mean it's bad. I mean, we're in a runaway country, and we think it's okay that we have $9,000 worth of debt and, and you know, trillions and trillions of dollars worth of debt, and we all just seem to be okay with it somehow. Or either that or we're just going, it's not okay, but there's nothing I can do about it. Yes, we can. Today, go home and figure out how much is coming in and how much is going out. And then do a little bit of simple math. See what the difference is between those two numbers. Now the idea is, and I'm gonna tell you something you already know, so hang with me. I'm gonna tell you something you already know because the idea is that what's coming in needs to be bigger than what's, go go finish that, going out, right? What's coming in needs to be the larger number than what's going out, and many of us have that backwards, and so we're living on a credit card, hoping that we can fix this one day, right? Today's the day to start fixing this. It's one thing you can do is create a budget, figure out how much is coming in, how much is going out, and then live within your means. Because God is not glorified when you have no margin to bless somebody else 
with what you've been given. I want to say that again. God is never glorified when you have to make the hard decision of saying, I cannot help you right now because I'm in over my head. When God puts us in a situation where he wants us to help and we can't do it, you know that feeling, right? I want to, I want to always be in a place where I can be generous. Secondly, cut up a credit card or two. I should have passed out scissors. Somebody in the first service said, you know what that's called, right? That's called plastic surgery. <laughs> it's like, man, that's really a bad dad joke. That's just so. I think we could do a better job of managing our funds if we had fewer temptations. Now, you know one of my biggest temptations? I'm just going to fess up right now. I mean, because uh, I'm in this boat with you. One of my biggest temptations is a four-letter word, sale. When I see that sign, especially when there's a percentage number put uh, right beside it, you know, like 15% off, 20% off. When I see 50% off, I'm done. I'm in. I don't care what it is. It can be something I don't need. I will never need it, but I've got to have it because, hey, it's 50% off, right? Some of you are just laughing uncontrollably, and some of you right now are looking at your spouse. Man. And I don't, you know, I don't even, yeah, I, was, I, got, I got in the car the other evening with a friend of mine, sat down, and he, I said, so how you doing? He said, man, I'm a sinner. I'm like, when did we get into confession? Dude, I'm, all right, whatever, go for it. Uh, the priest is in the house, I guess, whatever, and, you know, it's confession time. He's, I said, so, so what did you do? He said, I went to an estate sale. <laughs> I don't need a single thing. I went to an estate sale. It was bad. I'm, so, I was, I'm such a sinner. I was like, dude, where was the sale? And what did you buy? <laughs> I want to know, right? Gosh, it's, we've got to exercise some self-control, some God-given self-control, right? We've got to get in touch with a God who says, look, if that's not blessing somebody else, I really need you to double-think that. I really need you to just be thinking twice. All right, let's go on. Take a... Um, Try living, here's the next one. All right, so create a budget, um, cut up some credit cards. Next, try living on less. It just sounds simple, doesn't it? Try living on less. Try not to spend as much in the course of a day. Try not to think, well, you know, I could, I could, just because I have the money doesn't mean I should spend it. Try figuring out how you could live on less. And let me tell you, peanut butter and jelly is really good. And ramen noodles are great. And if you don't like peanut butter and jelly, I love fluff and nutters If you don't know what a fluff and nutter is, lean into somebody else and say, what's a fluff and nutter? It's, they're great. You know, take, take one of our Dave Ramsey classes and figure out how to manage your finances a whole lot better so that you can have the margin in your life that God wants you to have. So that you can live comfortably in your financial situation. Because God is asking us to do just that, to start living on what we have. What if you lived on the income you had five years ago and everything other than that was extra so that you could have margin? Margin to do something that would advance the kingdom. Margin that meant you would be able to give to your church or give to a need or, or you know, you walk by that homeless guy and thought the other day that, man, I wish I had something in my pocket to give to that person. And we should be doing something more. Wouldn't it be nice if you had the margin in your life financially to be able to do that? To be able to take care of. God is calling us to something today. To live in such a way, some of it sacrificially, to live in such a way that we can build the kingdom of God and advance the kingdom of God in such a way that people are being blessed because we've been blessed. You've been blessed. Jesus didn't come and die so that we could say, mine, 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 right? He came so that we might spread the kingdom and the gospel of his great love and his salvation to the world around us. And it's time for us as believers to start living with open hands and start looking at our wallets as an opportunity.